to the channel, and welcome to the next episode of the United States of America. Last time, basically, we went ahead and we changed a couple of policies. We instituted a strong policy for the United States, and we also increased the pollution tax to make sure that the federal government is making a lot of money off of it while also redirecting that money back into the United States via... Uh, new transportation systems and new energy systems so what we're going to be doing today is um, expanding on that and we are also going to be buying more military equipment and more on the side so let's go ahead and get into it so what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna we're going to come over here to our um, so we have so we're gonna go ahead and check over our taxes real quick and so I think we are very satisfactory on the industrial pollution tax we're making 448 billion dollars off of that alone so let's go ahead and check our state revenues and expenditures we are making 4.1 trillion or we are spending 4.1 nearly 4.2 trillion dollars on um, just general government uh, expenses and we are receiving not 3.9 trillion dollars in government receipts so what we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to go ahead and try to increase that to $4 trillion in government receipts. Um, we are going to institute more taxes. Um, what we are actually going to attempt to do in this gameplay, and you may have already seen this in my live stream series, we are going to institute um, a carbon... No, no, we're not going to institute a carbon policy. We're going to institute a, a policy to move people onto a cleaner source of driving. So we're gonna go ahead and boost our electric car industry, and we're going to make sure that that industry can actually start up, and we're gonna go ahead and make sure, start pushing people toward that. So we're gonna start a um, policy. We're gonna increase the fuel tax. This is going to be an excise tax that we are going to institute so people can start um, and so since the taxes on the fuel is going to start going up they're going to have to start looking toward more alternatives other than gas fueled cars so we're going to go ahead and call this the fuel initiative or actually we're going to call it the federal electric initiative Initi There we go. The FEI. I'm gonna go ahead and call it that. That's gonna get. That's gonna score us 14.2 billion dollars in tax revenue. So we're gonna go ahead and create that reform. And then we're also going to institute a highway toll tax. So I think the last time I actually did this, we actually got up to about three cents a mile. So we're gonna go ahead and ask for that. And we're going to institute that. That's going to grab us another $28 billion, $29 billion, technically, um, in revenue. So we're going to go ahead and add that to the reform. And we're going to gradually increase these taxes over time to start moving people toward electric cars. So we're going to go ahead and add that to the reform. And the fuel, Federal Electric Initiative has the highway toll legislation and law on tax on petroleum products. So that is going to be our policy what else could we actually add to it so we are making about 40 billion dollars off of that alone can we reduce so that's going to cut about 20 billion dollars in revenue if we cut the company tax the corporate tax um to about 20 percent so if we can actually get it to that eh, i think i'm going to hold off right now on that, um, what else can we actually do? Um, we have the pornography industry, the liquor and wine industry, tobacco tax. I think we could actually. This is. We're going to have a lot of setbacks because of the um, backlash that people are going to have against the United States um, increasing taxes, and it's going to hurt their purchasing power a little bit. So we're going to have a little bit of backlash. Let's go ahead and check that backlash. So we have just one pacifist movement going on right now in Washington, D.C. 
pacifist movement hates the government. Um, National Club for Drivers' Rights have did actually have a protest. Okay, so I guess I did that last time. So what version I'm actually playing this on is 6.44. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play on 6.44 just so I don't have to restart the game. If there's another update that comes out, then I'm going to go ahead and start it on that. But I am not playing on 6.46, I am actually playing on 6.44. That is to kind of just so I don't have to restart it because I've already restarted this game several times. I just don't want to restart it again. That's why I've kind of not... Um, done anything yet on on the series and I was kind of like at a loss on what I should do so now um, I'm getting a lot of research discoveries so we're actually gonna institute some money back into road maintenance and we're going to put some money Ooh, wow 25 billion dollars that's one hell what else can I actually put some money into um, I think if I just go ahead and put some money into rail transport you know what, actually, and before we increase that, we're going to... Okay, so let's do bike paths for one. That's going to be $5 billion. We have the deficit to around 1%. So what we're actually going to do... How is the California high-speed rail going on right now? So we have San Diego connected all the way to San Francisco. That is still under construction. So what we are actually going to do, we're going to go ahead and connect Los Angeles to Bakersfield. We're going to have several small projects going on between um, Los Angeles and Sacramento. We're going to fully fund these since we actually do have the money. And then Fresno to Sacramento. Yeah, we're just going to skip Stockton. I think... Uh, yeah, they're already connected by highway, so... Fresno to Sacramento, so a direct line from Los Angeles to Sacramento would make a lot more sense, and I think we can just connect San Francisco and Sacramento soon enough. So, those are going to be done a lot sooner. Let's go ahead and check what... Um, Helen Tao thinks of these. So, Los Angeles to Bakersfield, they're good choices and good for their expansion. Bakersfield to Fresno... Um, that's just a general, it will benefit from that infra infrastructure, and Fresno to Sacramento um, is all good. So we have no complaints of these new high-speed rails that are being constructed, um, and then I think the next major project is going to be a Los Angeles-Las Vegas line. So that is a major expansion that we are investing into the California high-speed rail. Um, I love investing in high-speed rail, honestly. High-speed rail is a very, very good thing, and I am... Um, if you actually watched my live stream, you will know that I am a massive supporter of um, high-speed rail and fast and affordable transportation. I believe that governments should invest in very fast and efficient um, ways to transport their people across long distances. So, in any case, California is a, making a very smart move in investing into a high-speed rail system, even though they most likely will have to stop funding the project. Um, so that is a very unfortunate aspect. However, there is still hope that Texas does have an agency and a private company, and I've already built it. Um, they have a private company that is actually building a high-speed rail system between Dallas and Houston. So instead of driving four hours between Dallas and Houston, you will only have to drive. You will only have to sit in a high-speed rail train for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So times. one other thing I need to figure out is to what other approaching the terrorist group, the North Korean Democratic Action, refuse. What other places need to be connected via high-speed rail? Um, can we do a Dallas, Oklahoma City? I'm not going to invest in a Dallas, Chicago line. I'm actually going to save that for a Hyperloop. Um, a Hyperloop would actually be a way better investment and a way faster way of transport transporting people from Texas to Illinois. That would be a very, very good thing. I could actually develop some high-speed rail 
on the east coast of the United States, maybe down into Virginia, um, down to Richmond, connect Washington to maybe um, somewhere down toward Chesapeake or even Norfolk. Let's go ahead and give a shout out to my boy Backstar. And we're going to go ahead and make a Charlotte. We're going to connect Charlotte and Raleigh. Or what else could we actually do? Can, do we want to do Charlotte to Atlanta? Atlanta to Miami? Eh, I think you guys can pick this. What cities do you want me to connect to via high-speed rail? Should there be more high-speed rail across the United States? And if so, what cities? Um, we could actually do uh, Kansas City to St. Louis. St. Louis to Indianapolis. Detroit, um, I mean, I think we actually, let's go ahead and check Canada real quick. Do we already have, no, so let's go ahead and ask Canada for a high speed rail. We could actually do a Detroit to Toronto line or just a New York to Ottawa line. Or even a Seattle to Vancouver line. If we can, we could actually connect San Francisco to Portland and then Portland to Seattle and then Seattle to Vancouver, and then we have the entire east coast of the United States connected. Or, we can do Seattle to Anchorage line, and we would have a high-speed rail train that would transport, that you can drive or get from Seattle all the way to Alaska, and then back. That would be the longest rail line possible. So let's go ahead and actually do a cost estimate of that, because I actually want to see that as soon as the Canadians actually accept our request. And before, because I'm spending a little too much time talking about high-speed rail in this episode, um, Federal Electric Initiative has passed. No major resistance has come out of it. That is good. So let's go ahead and go to whenever Canada accepts this initiative. Canada has agreed, so let's go ahead and do a cost estimate real quick. So then, $23.2 billion and $109 billion over the next five years. So 1,100 miles of high-speed train is going to jump to 3,400 miles um, at least in the next couple of years. It is good for the city's expansion, so obviously a Los Angeles-Las Vegas line is very efficient. Most of, the most of the time, if you want some advice on this, most of the time some interstate um, high-speed rail lines are obviously going to be the best ones. Anyway, enough about high-speed rail. We're going to go ahead and go on to the next topic of this of the series. Um, not space. I talk way too much about that in the past couple of episodes. We're going to go ahead and go on to the military. We're going to go ahead and increase our military strength by a few thousand. That's going to be a $293 million um, increase. We're going to go ahead and buy some more commandos, put that up to 3000 That's going to be nearly a billion dollars. So we've already invested an additional billion dollars into, into our defense budget. This is actually a similar number to what the president is actually requesting for the federal budget on the National Authorization Act. Um, in this next, in the 2020, President Trump wants set over $750 billion for his defense budget. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Is $700 billion too much for a, for a military, any military? Or is $750 million justifiable under the pretenses of what's going on right now? Let's go ahead and check our numbers. We have 1.35 million active duty troops right now. We're increasing that to 1.355. And then we have 865,000 reserves. And then we have 1,900 commandos, which is going up to about 3,000. Uh, we are paying them 3664 a month. And we have 49,000 missiles. Let's go ahead and buy 10,000 more missiles for $3.8 billion. And then let's go ahead and check our tanks. We have 2,700 tanks, rank 3, and then 4,800 rank 1 tanks. 
12,000 rank 3 launchers. We have 12,000 rank 3 launchers. 1,800 rank 3 helicopters. We have 4,600 rank 2 drones and 200 rank 3 drones. And then 3,600 fighter planes. 123 freighters and cruisers. Frigates and cruisers. Mostly cruisers because the United States doesn't need frigates anymore. 54 submarines, 11 aircraft carriers, however we have already ordered two. We can order some more submarines and then we can order some more nuclear submarines. Um, satellites I think we're, de we're good on. Um, I think we can order a few more frigates and then we're going to go ahead and do that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and invest... Um, I'm going to go ahead and shoot for at least 50 billion dollars in additional equipment for the United States. So let's go ahead and go over here to the to here. Let's go to the United States and let's go ahead and request 75 tanks. So you're going to go ahead and send that off to our national companies. Rank 4. We do not have that technology yet. Let's go ahead and come up again come to ourselves. We're going to go ahead and request 60 missile launchers and they're gonna come back and they're gonna overcharge us so more power to them so here we're gonna go ahead and request 70 helicopters mm, I think we can do that yeah it's it's it, it'll still accept it um, regardless of our production and I think I can just go go in there and I can subsidize them too, just to make it a little more realistic. Um, 200 rank 3 drones. Let's go ahead and buy... Wow, 304 production. Let's go ahead and buy... How much would 200 be? $1.5 billion. We can actually do that. Um, and they're probably going to increase that to like maybe... A couple... They're probably going to increase that to maybe a couple more billion, but we're going to go ahead and send that over. And then what else? Fighter planes. Let's go ahead and order a few more of these. Let's order... How much would 100 be? $8.4 billion. We can do that. And then we're going to... We have no production of nuclear submarines, so we're going to have to hold off on that. And the United States, we are going to order... Six new attack submarines. And we're all going to get these before 2021. And we are going to shoot to get this to 1.4 million active duty troops. However, as kind of an olive branch to ourselves and to my own um, proliferation needs, we are going to decrease the United States' nuclear arsenal by 75 nuclear missiles. So we're going to commit to the nuclear proliferation by 75, and we're going to go ahead and keep ourselves to 4,000 nuclear missiles exactly. So we're going to go ahead and confirm that. We're going to go to the next day, see what the reaction to this massive military buildup is. Very mixed reaction, but we did gain 1.6% in approval. So that is very good, very better. Um, people didn't like it because of the national defense. People liked the pacifism of me nu um, dismantling my nuclear arms. So that does actually give us a little more power to the pacifist movement. Um, people like the employment because we're employing more tr um, people into the federal government. So, very, very good. So, what else we're going to go ahead and do? We're going to go ahead and get 200,000 homes, um, federal housing, built. We're going to spend $6.85 billion into this. We're borrowing a lot of money, so we need to make sure that we watch our pennies and we're not spending too much. However, we do have a very low deficit so we are still going to be covered by this and we are not going to be incurring that much money even right as i'm spending all this money i only have a qu quarterly loan of 39.18 billion dollars that is very low in accordance to other gameplays that i've had where i've incurred almost 100 trillion 
not trillion, billion dollars because of that. My credit ratings are still triple A's except with the Chinese credit agency, but they're always biased and they hate privatized governments. Anyway, go to the next day. Let's see what that is. Um, who's protesting? Pacifists. They're just going to do that. Okay, so this was on the submarines, so that's going to be $8.4 billion. I'm actually going to go ahead and do some math right here. So in total, we are going to be spending $24.5 billion on our new military equipment. That is not including the cost of the two aircraft carriers that I actually ordered already. And if we actually put those costs together, let's go ahead and actually check that out. Where are they? They're going to be... I don't know. No, they weren't delivered already. Um... Okay, so let's go to the next day. Security and Policing Act has passed. I completely forgot about that. Now, along with the aircraft carriers, we are spending $37.84 billion dollars on military equipment. That is um, a massive increase in military spending for the United States. And apparently um, our aircraft carrier on this... Uh... Oh shit, we're selling aircraft carriers. We're not buying them. Wait, we're selling it to ourselves. God, I hate these kind of contracts. These are weird. Most of these are actually pretty decent, because apparently we're selling it to ourselves, but then we're making money off the contracts that we're buying. So, we're buying, but then we're selling, and then we're selling, but we're buying. I don't know, Chief. Speaking of military embargoes, let's actually go ahead and check any countries in the world that we want to go ahead and start setting some arms embargoes against. Um, there's a lot of countries in the world that we have a lot of odds with, and obviously we do not want to be doing business with those countries. Um, let's go ahead and start off with Pakistan for one. Uh, Pakistan is a nation of terrorism. We can go ahead and pull out our troops from Afghanistan. Um, you know, we're going to go ahead and hold off on an arms embargo, but once we withdraw all of our troops from Afghanistan, we're going to do that by 2024. We could actually do that before the 2020 elections, which is coming soon, um, more than a year from now. But um, we're going to go ahead and hold off on that. So let's look at Syria. Obviously, we're getting them $3.5 billion worth of federal aid, so we're going to go ahead and cut that aid now. Um, they do not need that aid. We, I still have no idea why we're giving them that aid. Uh, what are we giving Mexico? Let's go ahead and institute $500 million for development for Mexico. That will increase our economic relations, and I definitely want to get be getting a high-speed rail line with Mexico. That would be a lot better. And let's go ahead and do a meeting between our nations. That's going to be the cutoff for this episode. Um, let's go ahead and get it for this weekend. We're going to be meeting with the new president of Mexico. And I think I'm also going to be doing a new, um, what do you call it, economic market with Canada and Mexico. We're going to be instituting the brand new NAFTA treaty. And we're going to be relieving the original NAFTA treaty if both of the countries sign on. If not, then we can just leave NAFTA and we can just trade with them ourselves instead of being bound by NAFTA. Now, what we're going to be doing right now is we're actually going to be doing a couple of import contracts. They do have a couple of resources that we do need and we are going to buy them from them. And obviously, some people are going to say, well, Trump wouldn't be doing this. I'm not playing as Donald Trump. I am playing as myself, but obviously I am playing as Donald Trump. Um, no accessories required. Cotton... Um, there might be a little bit of lag, I don't know. There might be, there, I don't, we could buy oil from them, that could be something that could be arranged. 21 million tow, and then we can get a lower price on it. 481, 420, let's go ahead and put it down there. 
693, 420 was our original price. So we're gonna go ahead and put that up 450. We're gonna go ahead and call this the San Antonio, San Antonio Agreement. This is going to be an oil contract between the United States and Mexico. We are importing 21 million tow from the United States of Mexico. So 592, and they have accepted that. We're going to be buying them, buying $12.5 billion worth of oil from Mexico. Automobile construction, they have a couple hundred unit, couple hundred thousand units worth of construction that we could buy. Um, I don't know if I want to buy building housing and roadway construction from them now. Can we buy food? Coffee, copper, can we buy that? No, fish, electric components. We can buy a couple thousand of these from them. Let's do 4,000. This is gonna be difficult. I hate these flat 100 price ranges. Those are the worst. 97, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and refuse that. That's gonna be the end of the meeting. Um, got one successful trade contract set up with Mexico. Um, let's go ahead and check that out. It provides us at a lower rate than usual and will provide a good portion of our supply. So that is a very good contract on the end of the, uh, of the foreign affairs committee. So that is very, very good that we could actually set that up. So in any case, guys, if you guys like this episode, go, go, ahead, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe. If you guys like this episode, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Please go ahead and just support the channel in any way you can. Um, I really appreciate all the support that you guys give me. And in any case, again, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will definitely be posting this, ep this series way more often than I ne usually need to because I have not been concentrating on this series as much as you guys have been wanting me to. And I do apologize for that. But I am back on track and I'm going to be pumping this stuff out weekly. So thank you guys so much for watching.